I don't see why not. I am perfectly invisible here. As you are, as you are not. Move. There is a filing cabinet in the room that we use to climb up. You need to... Bradley, it's fine. Look down. It's not that high. I'm not looking down. Uh, Bradley, I lied. It's very high. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. I am Dave, and I'm the Keeper of Arcane Lore for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, so today we are playing through House of Memphis. Uh, this is one of five scenarios contained inside the Mansions of Madness. Uh, you can get your own copy of this tome from chaosium.com. And you can see the previous live plays, which were part one and two of this, as well as some of the earlier scenarios, on the Chaosium YouTube. Uh, if you enjoy the content there, um, leave a comment and consider subscribing so you can see what we do next. Um, as always, I'd like to thank Roll20, Sirenscape, and Web Captioner for being great tools which help us to run Call of Cthulhu. Uh, there's links to all of these websites in the description below. So, as we begin today's session, the three of you are outside the home of one Memphis the Great astounding magician and missing person. Uh, recently there was a break-in, a few burglars died in very strange and brutal ways, uh, and the three of you have been commissioned by the bad guys uh, to look into what happened and to find out who did the killing. Uh, you followed up a few leads, you've seen a magic show, you've torn around backstage, you've menaced uh, an off-duty police officer, uh, and all roads lead to uh, the House of Memphis. That made sense. Uh, so, uh, as the three of you have pulled up, it's early afternoon after lunch. Uh, it's a two-story building with a large sort of like tower on one side, which extends up towards uh, the sky. It's a very... Um, oh, I can turn that down. Sorry. Thank you, chat. Uh, it's a very idyllic neighbourhood um, with sort of like little... Uh, groves of trees that divvy up the um, other lots so that they break up the eye line. Um, and as we introduce the three investigators, um, what do you look like? How are you carrying yourselves? And what are you bringing with you? Do you have any specialised weaponry or similar um, art? Why don't you kick us off? Hi, Emma. <clears throat> I am playing Monkey, uh, who is... What, are, what did I say before? Like... Gender indeterminant, age indeterminant, uh, occupation indeterminant, and I think at this point in our game, species indeterminant. Oh, that's well. and that's <laughs> a monkey. <laughs> monkey is not, in fact, a monkey. They are a human. Um, just they spend a lot of time clambering up trees, so it's easy to see why people assume. Um, monkey is dressed uh, probably slightly more demurely mm -hmm. than the normal. Like they're still mishmashed clothes but most of them are sort of more in like browns or uh like kind of off grays did working gear yeah for a different kind of work um and i th i think it's safe to say the monkey does in fact have their heavy leather coat and bandolier of knives because uh use. not gonna get caught with without them again I didn't know you could put knives in bandolier Monkey can. Monkey can do a lot of things. So you hold them by the the not sharp bit. Uh, so as you're looking at the house, monkey, are you assessing the second story or the first? I think historically you're a second story uh, wet work specialist. I'm a second story acrobat, that's I believe. Word. That's the word. Um, yeah, I think monkey's just doing the sort of like once over reconnaissance view from the outside. Let's let's see what this place looks like and where it seems, you know, where might there be slightly more firm but unevenly plastered stonework? Uh, do any of the, the windows look slightly easier to jam than the others? That kind of thing. No reason at all. It's not like we don't have a key. No, God, no. Uh, yeah, that's true. So you've already stolen a key from uh, a... <laughs> group of attorneys uh which you can wield and we'll open the front door um but as monkey looks up at the second story and begins to assess the area uh we move next to bradley jackson that's me i'm dr bradley fogarty psychologist to the stars um and i 
it have been found myself in another breaking entering situation which is a habit that uh, i've got to break out of but not when there's mythos afoot not when there's un unknowable things to know that's uh, that's why i'm here uh he's dressed as usual in his plain plaid suit ready to um get to the bottom of whatever psychological you know niggles of plaguing whatever mythos creature we're going to find in there i was gonna say and, is the uh, assumption that you're going to have a chat with whatever's inside and absolutely uh so he's working theory right now i guess is you know the magician this magician is tangled with real magic um, and he's invited something to his house that he shouldn't have, which has been the case the last few houses, um, the last few mansions of madness that we've found ourselves in. Um, so all we've got to do is uh, find out what it not wants, find out what we can give it, and send it on its merry way. It's a very... Uh, I, I like the viewpoint. There's a hypothetical, Jackson. What would it take to dissuade you from... Uh... <laughs> uh analyzing the mythos and, and attempting to to uh give them therapy and send them on their merry way one terrible encounter or several uh probably it would probably take uh bradley's head being separated from his body okay all right so and nothing <laughs> less <laughs> legend all right uh so bradley well, wielding his, his notepad and he's eyeing a couch to lay down the multi-eyed <laughs> behemoth on uh that's right the last paper break in got cut in half right so the head removal is probably well, not too far off yeah one of them got i i made a note one of them got stabbed to death one mm -hmm. of them got hanged and uh one of them got dismembered one of them got all their limbs chopped off yeah. uh all right well fingers crossed that doesn't happen to you uh so lastly uh james and isabella Yes, I am James. I am playing Isabella Watt. Before I describe my character, Dave, I would like to object to your characterization, characterization of Orson as the bad guys. Oh, sorry. We are the bad guys. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are simply employed <laughs> by gangsters. No, I am Isabella Watt. I am an explorer. Uh, I am uh, tearing around in what is now my well-established breaking and entering into spooky house gear, which is a heavy leather oh. coat. I've got a pistol stowed in a a pocket uh, and a little kind of nightstick baton thing uh, at my side, as well as a light, lovely torch for when the lights invariably go out and we're forced to run screaming from the place. So you're assuming the worst. I'm tied up my hair just because, you know, keep it out of my hands. Uh, so if you're assuming the worst, what is the worst? What's the worst case? How does this go all wrong? Well, the bad um, is the bad. I'm not really. I'm not planning. The worst is we all get killed. I'm. I'm planning for the mm, best, which is we so. go in, we find whatever's wrong, and are able to fix it. The worst case scenario, look, um, the last three people who broke into this house died in some kind of magic trick. So I'm, I'm assuming that it ends with Fogarty death by a thousand cuts with playing cards. Uh, Monkey vanished just into one of those cupboard things, never to return. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and my, myself having to spend time with a magician, which is the most <laughs> horrible outcome. Awesome. All right, well, thank you for the very good ideas. Um, and let's jump into this scenario. So the three of you have walked up the driveway and are standing just before the house. You do have the key to the front door, but as you understand it, uh, the previous crew that went in, the burglars, broke in. So it's probably a smashed window somewhere as well. Uh, I'm going to throw us to the roll 20 view quickly. Oop, you're not supposed to see that. Uh, oh. And uh, this is uh, the approximate layout. I don't know why it's approximate. The rough layout of the house. So first story is what you're looking at here. And you know there's a second floor as well. So I'll go ahead and just outline that for you. So the front door is just before you. Um, you can get around the sides from the ground level. There are little trees and things scattered about. It's very pleasant. Uh, the neighbours are in eye line, but they wouldn't be able to hear anything unless it was like gunshot or screaming loud, just because the trees kind of break up the sound. Um, Be specific. What the three of you like to do? Uh, make some gunshots and scream really loud. <laughs> okay, all right. No, um, uh, should we go in the front or do we want to go around the back door? We've got the key, so we can just let ourselves in. Um... I mean, it's it's the middle of the day. I don't usually advise going into people's houses in the middle of the day, but we do have a key, so that helps. 
I'll I'm tell you what, we should probably try the obvious first. Um, I'm going I suppose to... it depends on whether or not we want to be seen going into the house. We don't want to be seen, we probably want to go in the back, because that's not facing the road. If we don't mind being seen, then we can go in the front. I, I think we try the front. I think we've yeah. got a uh, plausible reason to have the key. Let's try the front, and let's knock, why don't we, uh, first, just in case. Quite, yes. Yes. All right. Um, so walking up onto the little veranda and um, knocking on the front door, there is no immediate response. Um, you can see there are windows just on your left, which look into this sort of round sitting room. And on the right-hand side, uh, windows look into the dining room. None of these are uh, like curtained or hidden. Um, seems to be in just like its normal state. Uh, no one answers the door and there is no sound from inside. Well, key in the lock then. Okay. Um, the door swings open, uh, revealing a carpeted hallway um, and uh, further along a sort of a rotunda. There is a large set of stairs in the very center of this building, circular, which ascend up to the highest point and connect the two levels. Um, what I want to try doing with you guys just quickly is giving you, I'll give you a rough layout of the house so you kind of know the content of things, because things that you'd undiscover on a cursory glance, um, just to give you some context. So there's on the first level, there's a dining room off to the right and a sitting room. Uh, there's the rotunda in the center, the kitchen above, and it connects to sort of like a, a bathroom and pantry and things. Uh, close by, over to on the, the right hand side, uh, a theater has been converted um, so that he can sort of practice tricks and things. And then it goes up to the second level, which you'll need to investigate further. There is also seemingly an attic. Um, more rooms continue further on, but that will be what is immediately apparent. Um, let me go back to the map, and what would you guys like to... Uh, where would you like to go? What would you like to do? Right. Um... Well, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's keep our eyes open. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amusing watching me zoom around the map. <laughs> I'm just, just giving the, the rooms. All right. Thank you. We're good now. <laughs> um, well, so... let's, let's proceed with great caution here. Uh, uh, Monkey, if, if you'd like to go ahead first, keep an eye on anything that could pose an immediate danger to our persons. Uh, I don't want to say booby traps, but uh, they could be oh, booby traps. God, there's going to be booby traps, aren't there? All right, well, let's stay away from anything that looks magic-y. So I guess don't go in the theater. <laughs> Um, I would keep booby trap of fear. I'm gonna, you know, mm, <laughs> with that exact sound, monkey just turns around and is gonna do, is gonna disappear around the side of the building. Okay, all right. So oh, monkey's no. gonna okay. go a little flanking oh. mish. I, well, I wanna. My intention is to do once around, see if I can find out where that broken window is, how they got in. Okay, all right. So monkey's gonna circle the building. Uh, Isabella and Bradley, what would you like to do? I'll turn to Bradley and say, well, Bradley, they're dead. Clearly, it's just you and me now. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not really inclined to go any much further without uh, a trap spotter. Well, come on, we're here as experts. Let's let's have a look. Um, I'm not a rogue. <laughs> I absolutely consider you a rogue. What are you talking about? <laughs> there are similarities. Uh, <laughs> um... Well, let's let's just do a cursory once over, I suppose. Um, what's up in the back left-hand corner? What what room is that? Okay, so you're going to begin to push up and through to the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, let's take a look okay. there. All right. Uh, I am Bradley. going to keep an eye out for booby traps. Is there no anything resembling a ten-foot pole nearby? <laughs> you could uh, have a search in the garden. Like uh, a, maybe like tall, an umbrella, like a bamboo stake, or something. Umbrella uh, near the door. You could give me a, you could give me a, give me a luck roll. Actually, no, 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 an umbrella at the door is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, there's a, there's an Excellent. I would proceed with caution, tapping the floor in front of me at every turn. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, fantastic. Uh, can we so, get, actually, do we want to get some hirelings and send them in first? <laughs> Let's set up camp out front. <laughs> yeah, I have five gold pieces. 
Just, All right. All right. We'll take like a 30 minute, 30 minute just chill, just to make sure that we're at peak possible physical condition. Mm. And then proceed. All right, so uh, Bradley and Isabella both push forward into the house, monkey flanks outside. Um, from the uh, exterior, monkey, you can see that the, uh, let's throw to this, uh, the, the stage, um, you circle around, the back curtains are drawn, and then you get up to a little uh, veranda in the rear. Um, from here, you quickly note that this window has been broken open, uh, gar- glass smashed um, from the outside, so going in, uh, but it has since been boarded up. There's a couple of planks which have been um, uh, like uh, hammered into it to serve as a temporary barrier. Um, inside, Bradley and Isabella push through uh, the rotunda and into the kitchen. So again, the rotunda is a tall set of stairs that wind up the outside and plastered all along it are photos and um, actually more posters designed to promote Memphis's different tours. They show him doing grand illusions and with uh, you know his assistance at his side in any given image. Um, In the kitchen, uh, you can see that all, like, it's been cleared away. There's no plates left out. It's neat. It's orderly. Um, And all the, like, cutlery and and knives and things have been uh, sequestered away in the drawers. As you go in, Bradley, you're looking around, tapping away with your umbrella, swinging in front of you for fly wires and traps and things, ever aware. Um, Isabella... There's a, like a tingling feeling that runs down your spine and I need you to make a power roll. Oh, dearie me. Okay, let's make that power roll. I used to have pretty good power, then I got mind attacked by this, um... Don't mess with wizards. Yeah. Mind bullets. Luckily, I wasn't mind attacked that badly, it would seem. I succeed the power check. You feel like an intrusive thought begin to crest in your mind something like you know you don't want to think like it bradley's in front of you and, and you just have this overwhelm like it's like maybe like push him not like to hurt him just to do it or you know maybe i should just take something it's just pushing through and you, you suppress it back down and once it's pushed back down you do it's strange that it's a little out of character and you shake it out of your head though um and push it back down it's it was probably nothing mm. great right. i love it when it's probably, probably nothing probably nothing probably right. <laughs> oh, the three feel a bit strange in here bradley let's uh not tarry any longer than we have to all right where to next um i mean I suppose let's head up the rotunda and check the second floor, right? Okay. All right. Or actually, maybe maybe it's best we wait for for Monkey. Uh, let's do unless, a once over of of everything in here. Unless Monkey's already found their way to the second floor. That's a good point. Let's go to the second floor. All right, up the stairs. Come on. Okay. So Isabel and Bradley are sticking pretty close together and begin yes. to ascend the rotunda. But uh, metaphor go tapping up. every step. As we go up the right. stairs, I'm going to point... Oh, quickly, sorry. I'm going to start yeah, pointing good. out the shows and being like, you know, I do that thing where when you're on a long drive and you don't really know what to talk about. And like, ooh, ooh, in London. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> just making I'm doing my best to ignore him as, I, as I ignore her. Just yep. bang on each step on the way up. Which makes the ascent very slow. <laughs> Uh, so it's these red carpeted stairs as you begin to make your way up. Isabella making idle conversation and Bradley slamming his umbrella into each one as he goes. Ooh, uh, in gay Paris. <laughs> uh, monkey outside, what would you like to do? Um, so the broken window is uh, a room that currently we do not look like we have any vision on. Are there any windows that uh, give me an idea of what this room is? Uh, all the curtains have been drawn inside this window. You could try a spot hidden roll from outside to have a snoop. Uh, sure. Close. If not, it's yeah. minimum risk. Uh, from outside, you can see little. That said, the windows are locked. All it's going to take is a brick, and you're in. 
up to you. Deux points? Or deux points? Deux points nah, because I've only got like... I can't do that in French in my head really quickly. <laughs> uh, not many luck. Pas beaucoup de points. Pas beaucoup de deux points, but not so. Merci. Um, yeah, I am... There's a tower, yeah? Yeah, so... Uh, How many floors it, is the tower? It's it's this section here, the sitting room, kind of yeah. ascends up and does even have a little peaked roof at the highest point. Um, so I guess technically floor. three stories. A proper wizard's tower. Great! I'd like to climb the tower. Okay, all right, hell yeah. Um, so you finish your circle and get to the other side. Uh, the tower is... There's some ivy that crawls out the side and they even have trellises to support them. So the difficulty is not too high. Uh, I'm not going to need a climb roll. This is within your wheelhouse. But what I would ask is a stealth roll because this is in pretty plain view of any neighbours or anyone else. Um, so if you go in here, give me a stealth. If you want to not be noticed, otherwise you could just... That's pretty good. All right. Uh, Monkey begins to make their ascent. Did uh, you say stealth? Is that almost my best skill? It's pretty good. Okay. Um, so Monkey Anything begins I'm to clamber doing is dodging. up the outside <laughs> of the uh, rotunda, heading higher. Um, from inside, you continue to pad your way up the stairs, passing uh, all these posters. In several, you can see uh, a peroxide blonde woman. Uh, Josephine Lynch, and she's labelled as such in some of them, and you could kind of see her rise to fame through the posters. He's had assistants previously, but uh, this is clearly his favourite and the one that he's currently working with the most and has been for some years. Uh, additionally, there is a brief period where he and Harold Hawkins were getting, I would say, close to not equal billing but Harold Hawkins was like the and Harold Hawkins and he was kind of pushing him as like somewhat of equal merit however that stopped in about 1919 or so like a, a fair while mm. ago he kind of fell back away and that was when they split and went separate paths um so let's move the game. like an opening act for the headline yeah yeah that's it um, so Monkey's making their ascent and Bradley and Isabella, you come out onto the second floor. Um, from here, there will be uh, bedrooms and things. Uh, and let me throw to the screen. Uh, where would you like to have a little snoop? Um, so there's one bedroom in front of us. Yep. Oh, there's this. like a... What is this? This this like... Oh, shoot. Yeah, so it continues up a little bit further. Oh, and this is what up. Monkey's currently... You, you can you can go up there, though. It's, it's taken on this level. Oh, it continues I up see. a little bit further, and it, like, branches off to where the uh, storage and things are, are, are held. That's fascinating. Mm. Um, let me go um, over a couple. Yep, sorry, you guys go ahead. I'm going to head um, into this uh, side room, I think, and into into here. There's a door right here, right? Oh, sorry, I moved myself. Yeah, right. You can you can move yourself. I will go to here, and then I'm going to jump through this door into here. Oh, it's the bedroom. Perfect. Um, all right. So you're going to make your way down there and have a little snoop. Uh, Bradley, where are you heading? Yes, the bedroom is not going to be trapped. So I'll let Isabella go without my umbrella this time. Um, I'm intrigued by this storage, this storage place. Okay. Uh, so as you head into that room, you can't help but umbrella actually... still tapping. Okay. No, noted. Um, uh, monkey from the outside. This set does not have windows. As you're getting up, um, it does continue a little bit higher still, uh, but there are no windows on these high levels. You might need to kick your way through uh, a solid wall, which would be an impressive feat, but one that I'm sure you can manage. Uh, otherwise, any of the other, you can see there's a bunch of other windows on this level that you could uh, is, make your entry through. Is there a skylight? Make an, um... So it's for store. You know what? Uh, Scarlet's not unreasonable. Make an um. Could you just give me a luck roll, please? Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely. There's a there's a there's a skylight. 
carved into the sort of edge of the uh, of the tower. Um, looking through it, you can see um, Bradley beginning to walk inside. He has still not noticed you, and nor have any snooping neighbours uh, or anyone of the sort. Uh, can I? Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Can I like do that? <laughs> That thing that, um, that, like, obviously I don't have teleportation powers, but you know how, like, Nightcrawler will, yes. like, scoop themselves underneath things and, like, really quietly just, like, drop down? I would like to do that for my Uncle Brad, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Um, you creep the window ever so slightly open and slink into it, dropping cat like to the floor behind Bradley. I just um, want to, like, poke him in the back of the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley's pretty uh, uneasy as is. Um, I, I action. swing around and uh, smack the monkey with my umbrella <laughs> <laughs> without thinking. Yeah, I would like to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's cool. I think the altercation takes a few good swings, um, and then you're able to steady down. Uh, Isabella, you hear a little scuffle from the room uh, just above. So. Um, in this room, you can see there are a half dozen, like, filing cabinets um, and storage boxes to hold documents, ledgers. Most of them are locked, but it's simple keys. And Monkey, if you want to spend the time, you can get past them with a bonus dice on your locksmithing roll. But something far more interesting dominates the room. In the center, there is a large obsidian black box with golden filigree and cyan sort of greeny gemstones dotted across its surface. There is no clear lid, but there are a series of holes and rods and buttons that kind of circle the perimeter of it. And there's signs of scuffing tearing and use or at least movement and travel as things seen some miles this is some sort of puzzle box it's about half a meter wide it's 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 pretty big oh yes hi all right well um get to play with the puzzle box both both art who fucking loves puzzle boxes and monkey who is monkey? It's gonna play with the puzzle box. Also, I might try and yank out some of those gems. Just saying. Okay. Is this got a uh, a gaudy kind of magician's look to it? It's not at all uh, mythosy. Look, What's you haven't had a mythosy? really good chance to examine it. Actually, I, mean, I guess you were locked in there with some magician's equipment and rottweilers, so you've had a bit <clears> of a look. Instinct says this is a bit flasher. Um, crouching down in front of it and having a look over, you realize that the gold is gold. It's not just paint. Uh, the gems have a glint that's a little too real to just be glass. Um, and the whole thing has a heft and a weight to it. Um, this is a, this is a little more tangible than some of the props you've seen previously. Um... Elsewhere, Isabella, as you step into what is clearly the master bedroom, it uh, is different to the rest of the house. Memphis the Great uh, is, is the persona of one Axel Schwartz, and in the public, quote, areas of the house, like the sitting room where he might have guests, or the dining room where he has a large bust of Nefertiti, he kind of keeps that persona active so that he can entertain guests and be this larger-than-life personality. In the master bedroom that falls away a little bit, it is practical. There's a large, comfortable four-poster bed. There's a desk to one side with a small stack of papers um, and what looks like might be like a, a journal off uh, and next to it. There is a portrait of his daughter on one of the bedside tables and just uh, further above, there's a, an, an ensuite and a closet for like his clothing. And uh, these aren't costumes. This is just like suits and, you know, uh, a sh you know, his like work stuff when he wants to have a little play in the garden, things like that. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah. What would you like to be doing? 
I look I, as far as I'm concerned you know the way the, the you always get into the, the study or the bedroom and you, you you root around until you find a diary that tells you what to do that's been my experience previously so I'm gonna start going through the bedroom I'm going to check the bedside drawers I'm gonna open the, the, the cupboard uh, you know I'm, I'm, yeah I'm gonna have a good snoop okay. in this man's bedroom as you're snooping and I presume this won't uh, be an issue for you Currently, Axel is, like, just away on a trip. He is a fairly famous figure. Do you have any qualms with just kind of having a little nose around in someone's house? Like, is this... No? Uh, I'm seeing a lot of nose. Uh, look, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't... I ideally would not be nosing around in someone's house. I feel I feel a little uncomfortable about it. But I, I, when we were talking to uh, the police detective the other day, uh, he pointed out that he thinks that Hawkins might have had something to do with the disappearance of, uh, of, uh, of this man, of, of Memphis, of Axel Schwartz. And, and I, I think that, um, there's a possibility that he's not on a trip and that he's in trouble or worse. And I think that the possibility of bringing him at least justice, if not saving him, possibly outweighs the, uh, moral qualms of me rooting through his underwear drawer makes sense to me so are you doing this in sort of like a you're neatly looking through things and putting them back or are you tossing the place ah uh, well, i'm gonna start neatly and then when i fail and need to push it we'll go for a toss hey if it works uh all right perfect uh james why don't you go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll all right and meanwhile in the other room uh monkey and bradley what do you want to do so again bunch of filing cabinets locked with like documents it seems like they use like there's little labels on them it's like you know accounts from whatever and this is like tour dates and things you can have a filter through some of those if you can get the things open but what yeah. dominates the room is the puzzle box uh monkey if, if you wouldn't mind maybe taking a quick look at these filing cabinets i wouldn't mind perusing these documents uh and then you could move on to uh your uh your new heart's desire what <laughs> Can you get the filing cabinets open before you touch the box, please? Oh! And I'll look over and notice there are filing cabinets for the first time. <laughs> yeah. And then we can spend some time in here. And then I, I'm happy to spend some time in here perusing these documents. Okay. Uh, Uncle Brad, why do you have an umbrella? Case of... Case, case of booby trap. That, that's not a, a bad... Thank you! That's what I said! If that were longer than, like, three feet, because most things will do damage if they're set up that way to, you know. Well, it was a good start. It was a good start. Yeah, it definitely. You're you're coming along nicely. Oh, you're going to make me into a cat burglar yet, are you? I don't know about cat. You're, you're not very uh, graceful. <laughs> But, you know, like, you got the brains. Definitely. I'm flattered. So these filing cabinets. <laughs> yeah. Mute. Um, uh, do you want to go ahead and give me a locksmithing roll with a bonus dice? I don't think I'm going to need it. I'll take a Got him. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buggy, if you'll permit me, it's sort of like a lean over. You just hammer one of them on the side, and the <laughs> swings open. It's like, yeah, these things are these things are shit. Never buy that brand. <laughs> All right, yeah, absolutely. Uh, All right. The, these are easily opened, and uh, there are a lot of ledgers in here. Um, uh, Axel clearly keeps some of his own records of accounts and things, and possibly, you know second versions of what might be at Palmer and Pickering's. Uh, also, like, house finances um, and just personal um, I'm information. I'm thinking last couple of Mythos houses, last couple of mansions of madness, the, yeah. uh, the trouble seems to start when the owner-occupier of the house goes away somewhere else and then <laughs> brings something they weren't supposed to do back. So this is a stab in the dark. I'm looking for records of travel, like, you know, Ooh, itineraries you think... and travel agents receipts. You think you're real smart, don't you? <laughs> no, that's I do. A, that's a, I, a I good... can recognize a pattern. 
it's a good point. And also, there is a, there is a history of exactly that in the previous Mansions of Madness that you've had a look through. So, uh, all right, so you're looking for signs of re uh, travel. Look, the right one that makes the most travel. sense is, um, uh, is accounting skill wise, yeah. which I don't believe you have. Library use? I can take library use. I think just given the volume of this and that most of it is in numbers, not yep. letters. Uh, it makes sense. Hard, hard. Hard library and, use. And this is you already committing to, you're going to spend a bit of time here. So before you roll though, you're doing that. Monkey, you're looking at the puzzle box, I presume. Okay, and sorry, actually, and let me go back to Isabella briefly. So, mm. Isabella. I don't know what happened. I was just neatly taking out these clothes and they ended up everywhere, David. The place is turned over. Would you like to push the roll? Yes. All right, go ahead and reroll. No. <laughs> All right. Um, you go through the place. You go through his wardrobe, certain that there'll be something obscured behind one of the suits or caps and begin to tear it down. Uh, each of the, um, like his bedside tables, you open the drawers and it's all mundane at first. So maybe it's behind them and you unlock that and upend it Empty onto the, the floor. drawers, shake them, uh, look for bottoms. Take, you know, tr pull back the bed covers in case there's something under that and then mattress, rip that off as well. Um, you don't find anything particularly secret um, until you're standing there and sort of breathing a little bit heavily, having uh, exerted a fair bit of force. Uh, when you spot uh, in the corner, pushed like it's just like been flicked under um, uh, the the like the edge of the forget it. It's over by the wall. Uh, a small. Uh, before you continue, David, I will point. I did fail this roll. To I know. Be clear. This yes, was something yeah. you get without failing. This is just oh searching okay, room. brilliant. So you're getting something. Um, over in the uh, against the wall, there is a small blue journal. Um, ah, he had yes! on his bedside yes! table. Got him. Um, yes. As you reach over to <laughs> to grab it, um, you hear out on the street the roar of like a really flash car tearing through the suburbs. The skid of brakes as it all but like mini drifts in towards the uh, the the driveway of um, Memphis's home. Oh. Um, it's this long like bright blue I guess like a rolls or something um, and it's got golden filigree in vaguely Egyptian styling and the head of it is this little like horror style uh, I think falcon um, that peers out before it and stepping out of the car is Josephine Lynch oh Ooh. oh my god I thought like Memphis had come home but I was like oh my god <laughs> he's alive still, you have looking around the room though you have trashed this place yeah. Uh, it looks pretty bad. Um, this is going to take you a little bit, though. So let's <laughs> back to the other room. What are the two of you doing? Puzzle box. Okay, puzzle box. And Bradley, Get you're me. looking for... All right, so Bradley, a hard library use. Monkey, as you crouch down to look at the puzzle box, um... Some, uh, you can make some archaeology or appraise rolls to get more insight into the box itself, oh, yeah. but getting it open is going to be locksmith. Now, as you look over it, you give the few, like, like a test push here and a, a tug on this piece. You actually think you've got an all right... You'll be able to get this open. It doesn't look too difficult, but Bradley's paranoia about booby traps... There's something about that's kind of stuck in your mind as you circle the thing and look at it. It's got little holes and it just screams trapped. What do you want to do? How do you want to go at this? I would like to do this delicately and slowly and meticulously, which I think while monkey is not necessarily a slow like delicate meticulous well delicate maybe but not like necessarily comes across as a slow meticulous person they have spent a lot of time on safes houses making it seem like no one was there but, you know they're, they're good at what they do so i think this is definitely in their wheelhouse for for doing that i agree i would also say we haven't seen monkey with a real challenge before most of the locks and things you've gotten past were mundane house locks and the sword this is the first one that actually requires time and care 
and you know you can apply it where necessary um so if that's the case i'm happy to give you a bonus dice if you are willing to spend the time to do it so this will take a little while all right mm -hmm. um go ahead and make a locksmithing roll with a bonus dice uh bradley these are just numbers there's ledges they're just but... numbers yeah what's the numbers mean no real insight from them uh you could push the roll Actually, you push the roll by similarly like trashing the place like Isabella, but you're not seeing anything at the moment. Or you could look elsewhere. This is going to take Monkey a while, um, mm -hmm. so you could go have a little snoop somewhere else in the house if you pleased. Uh, I don't think I can push it down to 22. I suspect. So I won't. Me okay. one. Oh, excuse me. Um. And then I guess I'll go and check on how Isabella's getting on. <laughs> you head back out. Oh, uh, just say, uh, monkey, don't uh, don't break anything. I don't no know what effect that will have, thought. but uh, I said it anyway. All right. You head back out onto the main landing, and you can see Isabella currently in the process of tossing the place. Uh, a sheet goes flying past you and a pillow impacts the wall just in front of you. Um, you can see you go past the theatre gallery, which is a... There are, like, seats stacked up against the wall where people could look down at the larger stage in the centre, which curtains can be drawn around, and the whole thing can function as, like, a practice stage. Um, Very cool. Where would you like to go? What would you like to do? Uh, just Bell saw that car, right? Not yet, not yet. Timeline-wise, oh, it's, it's about to pull up. I, I just want to know where you oh, okay. when it happens. That's all right. I would be checking on Isabel then. Okay. Uh, seeing what she's found, letting her know what we found. All right. Well, if that's the case, then uh, Monkey, that was a normal success, right? 41. 41 okay. over 50, thanks. I'm going to double check that I only needed a regular. You only need a regular. You're okay. All right. Um, so, as Isabella, you find the journal and Bradley steps in to survey the da disaster as Josephine Lynch roars up the driveway, skidding into a park and steps out uh, to survey the house and then make their approach. Uh, Monkey, you carefully push and pull at the different um, uh, points on the, do on the box, finding where they click into place and always aware of like these little pin like holes surrounding the, the, the outside. Um, you're close to opening it and you know that it will flick open, but you, you, as you pull it, you feel like a catch on something underneath and you realize there's another switch towards the back, which you're able to slide across. And this time when you raise it, uh, the poisonous dart is not triggered, but you can see where it's loaded and like a, a fine black powder is caked along it. Um, oh, already smelling wow. it. There's something like burnt and off about the whole thing. Um, can, I, can, I, can I get that out with like, or is that like, would that be I'd need to mechanically get it out or can I like gently sort of pull it out? I would say hard locksmithing or a normal mechanical repair to remove it, but uh, that would be another role. And currently your attention is grabbed by the velvet interior, which um, is thick and cushioning and dotted in the center are seven concave holes which each carry a like a globe um, of glass, quite fragile looking, which is filled with a swirling, smoky, gaseous substance um, that ever so faintly shimmers and shifts in hues. There are seven of these orbs. Um, you don't know what they are. And you don't know exactly what they do, but they were clearly kept safe. And as you look at them, a wave goes from left to right, each orb in turn, as they slowly shift and become more purple. And just as the last one shifts, so they're all like a, a, a quite deep purple, the door behind you to the rotunda clicks shut. Hmm. What do you do? How big are they? Baseball? Tennis ball? 
I don't think I can take all of you, but one of you is coming with me. <laughs> you can take a few. You can juggle you, them you as you go. You definitely take a few. The the risk is that they they seem quite fragile. So as you reach out to grab one and and, and palm it, um, they can easily be hidden about your person. Uh, they are glass, but they. They're not gonna. It would be like you falling onto them or getting mm -hmm. banged or something might break one, but they're not just gonna shatter in your pockets. Um, you could easily take three or four without issue. More than that would be a bit pushing it. Um, and as you take it, you can see they're like this deep purple at the moment. I don't know why I'm doing this. You seem nice and possibly also very dangerous. So please, you know, like play nicely and, and I'll play nicely back maybe. Like, don't lock me in the room, thank you. And then I will pocket like three. Okay. So you're talking to the orbs. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's doing everything. I mean, me, the player, not a monkey okay. probably also, also is just like, you seem weird. I reckon you're the thing we were curious about. Cool. Okay, okay. We, we've spoken to oozes. We've dealt with like baby monsters, like, this is not the weirdest thing to be talking to at this point. I agree. I think Bradley's on thin ice. Also, <laughs> remember as... that Monkey has also travelled through time? That's true. That's <laughs> true. So right, I'm talking no, to no orbs is not monkey. that weird. No more questioning so, Monkey allowed. Uh, you take a few of the orbs and begin to pad back towards uh, the rotunda. I will, no, no, I will close the box. Okay. And like... I assume when I close it, it relatches itself. That's my assumption. But if needs be, I will like move. Now that I know how to get it open, I'll move most of it back quite quickly to lock I, it again. Yeah, I, I think it would actually need to be actively relocked. The um the mechanism, the like the the trap is still engaged and will fire um, if anything goes wrong around it. So it's risky, but you could just slide it shut and not lock it if you wanted to, up to you. I know that the dart is still there, yeah? Mm -hmm. Can I close it and do whatever I needed to do to latch the, the dart back in? So that if anyone does come in and is like, oh, someone got it open, they are like, Flick. oh, well, they didn't ah, get shit. the dart, so it's probably fine. Sure, sure. Okay, yep, so you, you re-close it. It is then. not locked, but the dart is engaged. So opening it without unclicking that final test will fire it. Um, you take a few orbs and pad your way back across the hallway to the door. As you go to open it, it's not locked, but it's kind of stuck wedged in the door frame a little bit. It takes a solid jerk to open it as you hear the roar of Josephine Lynch approaching in the car. Um, across the hallway, as you open it and look out, there is a large poster of Memphis the Great. It's one of his tours where he traveled to Germany. And the image is of his head larger than life, looming above the audience and staring down at it. And as you leave, you can't help but feel like it's looking right at you. If I heard the car mm -hmm. as I opened it, I might go out the skylight instead and not be in the house. All right. If that's, and if, if that's okay. No, no, definitely. All right, you look at the thing and you go, no, thank you. Close the door <laughs> and make your way back up and onto the roof. Uh, okay. Monkey's going to make their ascent. Bradley and Isabella, you hear the car are up and you can peek out and see them approaching. Uh, your own car is parked. Where did you park? Is it in the driveway and, like, we are here or is it, like, down to the side? We've been on the street, right? I imagine we would have parked on the street. Okay. Um... I, I, uh, we know where Monkey appeared from because we heard that scuffle previously and I know that there's a way out there. So I'm going to say, Qu quickly, quickly, we try and get out and um, we'll dart into the same right. room where maybe we see uh, Monkey's feet scamper up. And I'd like to try and help Bradley up and maybe uh, yell to Monkey to try and to try and get Bradley up uh, through the okay. uh, And you've got the, you've got the journal, Isabella, like under yes, your Yes, I have arm. the journal. Okay. Right. Well, uh, I don't like it. So I will need uh, going back out this way. There aren't like you dropped in. So unless you're going to start dragging filing cabinets up and under them, it's probably a 
It's probably just a normal climb test. It's not that high, not that high, but no bonus or anything. So, Monkey, do you want to give me a climb just to 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 ascend? Um, Bradley and Isabella, you can Isabella, if you're assisting Bradley, you can get a bonus dice. Um, but the yep. last person up is making a flat roll. Uh, I don't like that. You could push it, Monkey. The risk is making a. You are going to basically do a little like a kick off the wall and leap up. But what you are clearing out onto is a slanted roof. Going a little bit too far and losing balance is a one-way trip to tumbling over the other side and down onto the garden. This is a fairly risky one because it is not only damage, it is also very much seen by Josephine as she enters. Hmm. Hmm. Thoughts, mm. friends? Uh, if you have do the it. luck to spend, otherwise... I have 29 luck. I'd, I'd spend the six, but your call. Oh, it's only six? Yeah, I spend the six. Very well. I, I I will spend six points of luck. Be cool. Okay. All right. Uh, Monkey, you do the little kick, and you're just about to, you know, miss it when you, your hands barely catch on it. Um, you're able to heave yourself up, and as Isabella and Bradley re-enter the room, uh, you just see the tail. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the, the tail end of is like okay. a thing, but it does just sound like a monkey. Uh, you see monkey's boots swinging over the this side. Is, this is why certain certain viewers get confused, Dave. Eh? This is this is what happens. This is why people think the monkey's a monkey. I mean, you're only perpetuating it. At this point, at this point, species indeterminate. Species indeterminate. Uh, you see uh, monkey's boots clicking over the side and they are now crouched up on the roof. Uh, for the two of you to go out, you will also need climb rolls, but I will take bonus, you can have bonus dice Bradley as Isabella helps you up. Come on, up, up, up. Can I, I've got base climb, but I also have base jump, which is slightly higher. Can I jump? Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a leaping motion. I'm, I'm fine for jump. Excellent. I will try a jump with a bonus die with Boing. no confidence whatsoever. You have a little confidence. I will no. not. Bradley, okay. he's 44 not over 20. It's just, it's just not happening. Uh, you take a leap, All but right. you are, you are like almost a foot away from it. It is probably up on the roof. You need to get up there, catch, and then pull yourself up. You, you uh, can't make it. Wait, and as you do, help me shove, help um, me shove these filing cabinets. Wait, 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 wait. I've got, I've got. Some. How big is the obsidian box? Is it person sized? Uh, like curled up inside it. Yeah. Yes, it would be. Just just from the outside view of it, yes. Yeah. Monkey, can we can we open this? Are we are we safe to open it? No. No <laughs> d d damn uh, There's uh, a latch on the back, but I don't think you're gonna find it if I'm not there to tell you exactly where it is. It's quite well hidden, you know, it's like it's in one of the filigree things where like behind one of the gems you've kinda gotta shimmy it a little bit. It's it's a th it's Can I make a mechanical repair? Sure, sure. Uh it's gonna be hard. But you can do it with a bonus die because of monkey's assistant, so... All right, is this risking getting shot with it, or is it just, can I quickly yes. see it? Okay, then I won't touch it. Uh -huh. um, uh, okay. Wait, just failing it wouldn't just be like a, nope, I cannot find it. No, I think it's a pretty well-made you know trap. Um, yeah, it is. It's pretty... It, this is... You kind of have to attempt it at one point, like, because you'll, you'll, you'll click something and you'll think that you've gotten it. Um, so you kind of got to try it to know. Additionally, just to... Before, monkey could flag it. It's large, but the inside is like velveted and designed to hold mm. these seven orbs. You, you couldn't fit a person in it. You'd have more luck with emptying a filing cabinet or something. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, well, I mean- I Just let me, let me move the filing cabinet. We'll, we'll jump on, we'll climb up out of here. Um, ah, all right, all right. All right, so as Bradley begins to heave on one of the filing cabinets, and Isabel is currently looking over the puzzle box, Monkey, you uh, quietly move to the edge and look down as you see uh, Josephine pause at the front, and it's like she's centering herself. She takes a deep breath, adjusts her hat, um, and then reaches uh, a chain, which she pulls out um, from under her shirt and slides into the lock, clicks it open, and steps inside. The door slides shut behind her, and there are now four people. Well, three, because Monkey's on the roof in the house. All right, can Bradley I, and- Can I climb down? Sure, what's your intent? Where do you want to be? I'm gonna go knock on the front door. 
Sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Pretty um, good idea. Give me a uh, give me a climb roll, just for speed and everything, but but normal, no 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 added threat. Pretty smart. Man, it is, it's it's taunting you. Climb with rolls the are gonna they're gonna nickel and dime you out all your luck. You can push it. Uh, punk. That's three points for luck. Okay. Right. I'm now uh, on twenty luck. Uh, it's a nice even number, so it was yeah. worth it. All right, you begin to shimmy your way down the outside uh, landing. Uh, you make like a little leap to one of the trees and then scurry down the, the remnant of it um, and then make your way to the front door. Meanwhile, inside, Bradley and Isabella, what are you trying to do? Uh, move hard and connect so I can climb up out of there. Okay. Yep. All right. Isabella, you're, you're, you're doing the same thing? or I will help, yes. Get it, get okay. it. All right, can one of you make a strength check with a bonus? Okay, dose? well, I'm helping Isabella then because I imagine she's got more strength than me. Okay. <laughs> Wait, these things are full of bricks. Bonus die, I'm helping out. Bonus dice, Jim. Hey. Ooh. Yeah. You grab one of them and they're like heavy up against the back of the wall and you heave it out towards the center of the room because like deep divots in the carpet. As you get it to the center and you're helping Bradley up and onto the thing and there'll no longer be rolls needed. You can just go out this way. Um, the door across the rotunda slides open shifting through the rug pushing it out of the way giving you a clear look out towards the stairs which swing down towards the lower landing swing down like a slide no 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 just, just no no just they just, just, they just oh. sorry yeah no no that was me saying they, they, they just the oh, okay opens. i was expecting i was expecting them to just you know slide mm. slide stairs at some point and i thought that was it uh, while Bradley climbs out, I'm going to go over and shut the door. Okay. Bradley um, gets up to the, the thing and begins to like, heave his way, and you get to the door. Inside, uh, or down the lower level, you hear slightly muffled. You hear, Okay, darling, I'm here. What do you need from me? And then a, a pause. What are you doing? Shut the door? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I sh I... I, I I, I, I shut the door. Yeah. Okay. You slide it closed um, and you see Bradley pulling his way up and onto the, the roof. Where are you going, Isabella? Um, I shall follow out onto the roof. Okay. As Isabella scrambles up onto the roof, Monkey, you land and can make your way back up to the front door. As you pass the car, this thing flipping rules, man. It's a, it's a beast. Got a dirty, great big engine and the tires are massive uh other uh, uh appreciative things about cars like it's <laughs> cool mirrors not a, not a car guy dave not a car no, guy no i'm not uh it's pretty sweet though uh, uh and you can see uh in it's like it only fits like two it people oh 1920 yeah. so, so many it's, it's a v0.5 with <laughs> half a horsepower <laughs> there's still a horse tethered to the front of it uh, this the, is, it is, it only fits... this is like a newer model that doesn't have like the wind up engine like you just it, it ignites on its own oh hell yeah this thing, thing explodes what? into action um, witchcraft there is it, it only seats uh, two people and the second um, so uh, the passenger's seat is occupied by a like a, a it barely fits on it but it's like a like a hard case it's been jammed so it goes down into the footwell and then angles up past the the chair um and is occupying a good chunk of the space there's also like a small like a, a handbag or something next to it um what do you want to be doing god i, I bet that car goes zero to four in 45 minutes <laughs> Um, you said there was a, there was um a hood ornament of of Horace. Uh, Horace? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna unscrew that as I walk past. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. You you go past it. It's a you know it doesn't really unscrew. They're kind of fixed on. So it, you, it's pretty on there. Do you want to give me like a strength roll to like? <laughs> it's basically it's less unscrewing and more wrenching the bird off the bonnet. Sure, I'll give it a whirl. All right, give me a strike <laughs> roll. Oh my god. 
<laughs> so you go past and you really coolly you really coolly try to wrench on it and just turn it into like a little swing and a twist so <laughs> then you keep walking up like ah d- d- just as i bet no, you're not getting that big up not easily at least That's um right. at the front Smooth. door uh the entryway has those sort of um stained glass in the door so you can see inside but it's all opaque and blurred and, and a little bit weird and you can make out barely the figure of miss lynch standing forward in in the rotunda just a shape through the glass uh, what do you want to do you, uh, you knock on the door and um lynch doesn't move for a moment out of the corner of your eye you see bradley up on like <laughs> the the roof has a serious slant and he's pressed himself up against it to make sure he doesn't <laughs> fall and he's now realizes nowhere else to go from here but more roof um isabella makes her way out as well and then lynch turns and walks to the front door as she opens it um she's beautiful but in a quite severe way and she looks down her nose at you clearly already you know in a in a position of power she or at was, least perceived. she was after my time wasn't she no she actually she did cross over with you and you mm-hmm. found her to be uh quite unpleasant to work with then as well she was very possessive of memphis Um, and their relationship as assistant and possibly slightly more Um, and she didn't take well to anyone treading on her toes and especially because you came in and kind of worked as an assistant for a few specific key acts she very much did not like you now as we kind of established before we began this scenario this was a while ago and you didn't tour with them for that long you've aged since then you won't be recognized unless something happens like pushing a role or you want to try and play that card and you're like, hey, don't I know you from somewhere? But as is, they might have a slightly familiar feeling, but they, they probably wouldn't recognize you. And as the door opens, there's not even a glint in her eyes. Uh, and she looks down at you and she says, uh, hello, can I help you? Yes, hi. Um, I, I was just passing through town and um i wanted to pay a visit to uh my old friend um uh, mr schwartz <laughs> if you're referring to uh memphis the great um he's not here at the moment he's out of town so why don't you leave as well i, I i'm i'm sorry he's, he's out of town are you the um are you the housekeeper <laughs> good god no sweetheart Uh, I'm his assistant. Uh, You may have recognized me from any of his tours if you were a real friend of the great. I'm Ms. Lynch, and she holds out a hand for you to shake. I'll shake and go, I'm Monkey. Hoping to spur recognition. Okay. Uh, They would, uh, would I? Yeah, I think they would have known that. I think Schwartz might have known my actual name because mm-hmm. it would have been more of a control. but they would have still they would have called you monkey yeah on sat and everything and 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 josephine definitely would have as you take her hand there is a moment of like that's a stupid name uh and then she pauses still holding her hand and says ain't you that little rat that made a play for my position <laughs> nice to see you again miss lynch i'm glad you're you're doing well yeah i'm doing real well Last I heard, you were... You don't work in this town anymore, do you? No, of course not. Last I heard, you don't have much of a career in, uh... Well, the craft, as anything. Oh, goodness, no. I I, I was hired because I'm an acrobat. I wasn't hired because I was a magician's apprentice. That is something that I leave to professionals. <laughs> yeah, well, if we need a hole through a roof dove through or something, we'll give you a call. And she goes to close the door. So, Memphis isn't around, then. Where's he gone? None of your business, all right? Why not? It seems like a very instant question to ask. Uh, because the gentleman comes and goes as he pleases. Uh, because the gentleman's researching new tricks and performances. And because the gentleman don't want nothing to do with you. 
the gentleman don't want nothing to do with me or you don't want nothing to do with me because those are very set different things one and the same kid all right i get memphis all right we, we're we're one of a kind we're we're the same mind linked between two bodies you understand we work together so closely we i know what he's thinking all right and i know he doesn't like you any more than i like you so why don't you get out of here before i call some law enforcement all right i mean i'm i'm terribly sorry i wasn't wasn't expecting such an uncivil reunion yeah. but i can see I, I i'm not wanted here so i'll go no yay and uh you're right to be sorry she uh yeah. Good afternoon, such. Hmm. Uh, she stands, she closes the doorway, and then you see the letterbox go, Tick! and she, like, watches you to make sure that oh, you're actually leaving. No, I think if I see that, I will just, like, slowly drop down and be like, you know it's incredibly rude to spy on people, right? It's incredibly rude to appear unannounced. Now go on, get out. This is private property. Okay. Uh, where are you I will, heading? Um, I will duck underneath the mailbox, and I will not pop up again. Okay, make a make a stealth check. It's gonna be hard because yeah, they're watching you to try and spot where you go. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you just duck <laughs> down. They wait for this a moment. This isn't a kids' dream, is it? Because <laughs> if it's kids, I'm sorry, kids, for that. <laughs> hand gesture but how <laughs> right now. hell yeah all right uh yeah you you duck down uh and after a moment the uh the letterbox swings closed uh the last you hear as josephine returns back into the house is i never liked that one you never liked her either mm. do i hear that yeah this is creepy. We've just been we've just been raided for reference. A quick introduction for those just arrived. We're we're trying to break into a magician's house to figure out what strange things he might be up to. Two of us are on the roof because his assistant has just arrived, and uh, one of us has just managed to speak to the assistant to try and give us time to I don't know escape or do something. I don't know where you think you're going because you are very much trapped on the roof. So oh, we're uh, not going to be trapped on the roof for long. So, uh, Miss Lynch returns back into the house and Monkey darts down, invisible to her and everyone else. Uh, on the roof, Bradley and Isabella cling to the edge of the, uh, tower, which ascends to a conical peak. Um, what are you- where do you go from here? I am inclined to go nowhere. Bradley, Bradley, you're gonna have to come down. Well, we can't stay up here. The, the filing cabinet's down, and you heard that woman just talking to the house as if, as if Memphis is still here. There's something going on. I don't see why not. I am perfectly invisible here. As you are, as you are not. Move. There is a filing cabinet in the room that we use to climb up. You need to... Bradley, it's fine. Look down. It's not that high. I'm not looking down. Uh, Bradley, I lied. It's very high. <laughs> <laughs> Can... Can can monkey? I, again, I don't care if there's rolls involved, but just for the for the hilarity of it, get up to that part of the roof again and just be like, "Are you coming down?" Oh yeah, Do you've you you've done this a few times now. Yeah, yeah. screw it up. Uncle Uncle Brad, you you can't stay up here. It's very visible. You're gonna need to come down. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna and and cousin Isabella, I'll coach you down. It's fine. There's there's trellises and stuff. Yeah, You'll trellises. Be. That sounds good. Come on. What? What's that woman doing here? Oh, she's talking to the house, because Memphis is the house. He's in all the paintings and stuff. You think that's what's happening? That's rather yeah, terrifying and disturbing, and we've yeah. got the journal, so we can confirm it. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, um, one of the posters kind of looked at me, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that she rocked up, because because Memphis, like the house, told her that there were people in him and therefore she's here so this is a fascinating theorizing session that we should do once bradley is not dangling off that's the roof. very true come on brad someone gonna catch me if i fall no nope. i'll try get down first so maybe i can catch how about that i'll coach you down we're gonna have to do this quickly all, all right. right okay come on isabel i can go first that's all fine right. I, I start scrambling down. I was a mountain climber. I'm pretty good at this. Oh, okay, good. All right, make a climb. Uh, ooh, maybe a climb not. Up. Take a bonus dice. Monkey's, monkey's coaching. Excellent. That is an extreme success. 
Whoa. Nice. All right. Yeah. You make a very rapid descent, landing on the ground below. Uh, Monkey has to go down with Isabella for a moment um, to, to coach them down. And Bradley's left on the roof alone. Monkey, as you get to the lowest point, uh, you... Uh, just checking that everything's still in place, you you, you look at one of the the orbs um, which you procured, and they have returned to a sort of a muted, foggy grey. But as you watch it, they begin to shift towards a purpley hue. And looking up, you see Bradley perched along the edge, cowering against the uh, the the slates. Suddenly, underneath you, Bradley, two of the um like the tiles you're holding onto whiz out from under you your ass gets slid towards the thing and i you are making an unwilling jump or climb roll as oh you are my god thrusted <laughs> towards the edge this is some I don't appreciate this. level stuff the doors keep opening and shutting i think memphis is in the house and he's not happy i finally got my 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 stair slide at least <laughs> true it was all ah. worth it all right uh, I, I can uh, see jump though because it's basically Throwing yourself towards the bushes. Yep, that's what I'll do. Right. Oh, is that luckable? That's it actually is. seven bloody points. Close. Uh, yep, I'll, I'll have to spend it to not die. Okay. Which brings me down to six points of luck left. All right, so the tiles underneath you uh, like skid forward. You get flung towards the edge. You're able to get your boots into the guttering, crouch down, and then fling yourself off towards the tree on the other side. You slam through several of the branches, jamming your hip against one, and then like upending backwards to drop into a bush, taking no damage, but um, you know, Except for my scuffing pride. up your scuffing up your, your your shirt and things a little bit. Um, all three of you are on the ground now, um, and as you uh, watch, you can see uh, reapproaching the front comes Josephine Lynch. She is making her exit. What do the three of you immediately do? Going to our car and leaving. Oh, but she's okay. in between us and the car, right? Or can we get to the uh, car? No, she's not. But your car is definitely pretty visible. Um, you didn't park it like secretly around a corner, like it's just on the street. Making a break for that, she would see the three of you. Here. Let's just let's just stay put until we leave. Until yeah, uh, probably make our way around the back of the house too, so she can. Or we could like, just make our way into one of the neighbors' houses, like just to their yard. We'll be less visible. I think we don't know. Yeah, empty snap decision. I, uh, backyard of the Memphis house. Okay, uh, everyone's going. Mm -hmm. mm. You can you can handle being in the neighbors because you're you're in practically invisible. Uh, I'm but, gonna, yeah. I might hoik over the fence and get to somewhere that isn't this particular area, like sure. just uh, like up a tree, yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. easily like jump back down if I need to. But I'm just gonna be off the property. No, worries. all right. Well, everyone's trying to hide. Can everyone get now? Give me a stealth roll with a bonus dice, because um, you're not okay. actively being searched for. Success. Okay. Uh, Not happening. Eighty-nine. Uh, I will give you. I will. I'll give you three points of luck for mine to succeed. Okay. All right. That's a majority. Uh, monkey ascends up one of the trees and then over into a neighbor's yard, invisible. Uh, Isabella sprints for the back um, and swings around the house to uh, crouch in the garden uh, and also is not noticed. Uh, Bradley, what is your strategy? Uh, not be spotted. <laughs> <laughs> so you're staying where you where you landed, kind of crouching down into the bushes. I kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, if I if, if you told me I landed in some bushes, I'm inclined to just melt into the bushes and stay completely still. Okay. Right. Problem is, there's like debris all around you from the <laughs> catastrophic tumble through the trees. Um, I think it might work. Walking out, uh, Josephine pauses on the porch and she doesn't look around. You can almost feel her eyes like scanning her peripherals. Uh, and then before she walks down to her car, she says, don't worry, sweetheart. Anyone snooping around's gonna get what's coming to them. We'll be back before you can blink. And then she walks down to her car. The engine roars into life like a barely tamed beast. And she reverses down the driveway and departs, um, accelerating far too quickly for a suburb. A small child throws themselves into the pavement <laughs> to get out of the out of the way of the ascending vehicle. Um, 
she's left. What do the three of you do? And we can reconvene, right? Mm -hmm. I... As soon as we get back, I start dusting my hands and go, right, so it's the Corbett house plan again, right? <laughs> a couple of buckets of gasoline, whole thing goes up in flame. No um, more problem. No, no, I, I, actually, well, they two things. One, keep getting away with this. <laughs> uh, I would I like to see why not. Before I hop back over onto the property, I want to pull out one of those orbs when I'm not on the property. I want to know what it does. Do, is it just gray? Does it look different? Or is it exactly the same? Gray. Gray. And there's no shift while I'm looking at it? <laughs> Great. No I'll pocket it and then I'll head back over and be like, um, no, I, I don't think we should burn it down. Um, I think we should have a look at that journal and then we should report back to Mr. Vaughn and then he will decide whether this house stays or not. Sure, that's probably a good idea. Um, well, let's is, check... he, is he likely to believe that the uh, spirit of a dead magi magician is inhabiting the place? He's inclined to believe the truth. Well, it's a, hopefully. It's a cell. Um... He's but a fairly we have practical... the journal, so I, it'll depend on what the, the journal says. Will, the journal, will, you might just think the journal thing. is the ramblings of a magician. Uh, filling a journal with lies would be... Let's check what it says first, yeah, uh, and I'll it, start scanning it. through it. Well, um, the other thing is, like, it doesn't really matter whether it was the house or Memphis. If we go to him and say it was Memphis and the journal backs that up, we have an answer for him. And it's true for a given value of true. Um, where, uh, so we'll do the journal first, because like you said, you can base your plan off the information contained within. Where are the three of you reading this? This will take a little uh, bit of skimming through. Where are you, in the car? Uh, yeah, I, I suggest car. I do not want to be on the property, but... Nope. All right, sounds sense. like we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to break away then. I was going to say I could read it in the backyard while the two of you do another frantic search well, like of the you place. Said, like, Maybe like, there's the more cars things. nearby. You can just read it while parked. I think you're just saying, like, you're not on the property while you're, while you're examining well, it. No, or do and we... I would also possibly move the car, like, off, like, around the block slightly, just because... We might okay. not get another chance to dive back into the house. Do we want to do another quick scan of it before Josephine gets back? No. Okay, okay. Just call it gut instinct on this one. I'm inclined to agree. All right, uh, let's get out of here then. Okay. And we'll we'll drive the car around the block. All right, cheeky blocky. Uh, who's going to read the journal? Uh, I'll I'll read it unless there's an objection. I I, okay. I I feel attached to it, having having found it during sure. my so tossing Bradley of the or monkey, place. you're you're driving. Oh, I, I can that's... I can drive. Even, can even drive? without skill points in it, you could like you know it's assumed you can do the basics unless there's a reason. Do you have you a so... license? Sure. Are you a cop? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, right, no, then. I think the, the thing is, do you want an answer to that? <laughs> no, I suppose I I strictly don't know. Right. All right. It's, uh, you look, you, you don't spend time doing what I do without learning how to be at least a moderately okay getaway driver. Makes sense. All right. By all means. Yes, I can drive a car. All right. So Monkey gets into the, the, the driver's seat and with Bradley and the passengers and mum gripping the the top of the thing at every corner. The, the Jesus uh, bar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you begin to just uh, navigate the blocks for a while while Isabella sits in the back and thumbs through. Uh, this is a travel journal. Uh, it dates back to early 1917 when he began it. And Memphis is pretty religious about talking about his trips and, and, and is keeping a, um, like updates on, on where he's at. It begins with him talking and he's a very charismatic, funny guy. He has witty insights and humorous asides. Uh, he seems quite knowledgeable about the areas he's going to and he enjoys diving into the cultures. Uh, he talks about food and, and, and the peoples that he meets and he's clearly very well traveled. He's done a lot of tours as part of his act. Uh, where it kicks off and where it starts getting interesting is in April 22nd, 1919, and lo, it was a handout. Was that the same? Uh, he and uh, he and Holt 
Hawking's. Fell out, Hawking fell out? It is uh, real close, yes. Oh, uh, okay. All right, James, would you mind reading this to the class? Absolutely. So uh, the piece reads as follows. Finally, quiet. The monks seemed obsessed by their music rituals. If I can credit that discordant assembly of flutes, horns, bells, and drums with the term. Here on this track, we hear only the wind and the cries of strange birds. 23rd, 1919. A herdsman tried to interest me in the legend of the Maigol Ma and claimed to possess the skull of such a beast, which he, which he would be happy to show me. He had the eyes of a Monty man I studied in New York last year. We declined his kind offer and wished him good health. He spat on the ground and muttered a curse as we left. April 25th, 1919. Still cannot find a trace of this supposed mystic. The forest thinned out as we climbed and I am certain we are in the right place, judging by the alignment of the mountains. There is no obvious animal life here and the silence is eerie. If we find nothing tomorrow, we must turn back in order to fulfill our royal appointment. April 26, 1919. Darkness is coming on. We should have turned back today, but in the twilight, Josephine spotted what appeared to be a man-made stone tower on an outcrop. If we investigate at first light and it disappointed, we can still make it back in time to perform for the king. April 27, 1919. This man is as rich a mystery as I have discovered in years. I cannot quite translate his name. It yields something like ma maker of gates. Okay, it seems ironic since his cave dwelling has no protection except blankets. He seems to have no fear of wild beasts. April 29th, 1919. He levitated my shoe today, completely impromptu. Jay saw it too. He let me pass my hand completely around it and pluck it from the air. The only possible explanation is that he had been feeding us hallucinogens. May 4th, 1919. I think I see, but he is holding something back. May 9th, 1919. Seems totally uninterested in Jay despite the dedication to her studies. May 10th, 1919. He will carry out the call tonight. We must all stand in the tower at the appointed time. His eyes have changed. May 11th, 1919. The spheres. I see, 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 I see. May 12th, 1919. I looked for remains. There were none. I copied the symbols. We must have a story to explain our absence. From there, uh, the writing changes. He continues to keep a journal, but it's no longer about travel. It's about pursuit of forbidden knowledges. It includes references to creatures, gods, formulae, that to less experienced investigators would be gibberish. But to the three of you have the telltale signature of the mythos and the reality beyond our fragile walls. One Let me more... just say, called it. <laughs> <laughs> one more passage right at the end is of note. And James, I'll share this one to you as well. November 16th, 1925. Phyllis, Philip states YS is contumious within all times and space. If I can reliably open the way, no frontier would be forbidden. I could travel to the very structure of the cosmos as a spider might traverse the joints and eaves of a house. And this is uh, one of the most uh, recent... Uh, is it... Is it... Sorry, as someone who is not familiar with any of the myths, are we dealing with, like, Yogg-Saloth? Is that who we're dealing with here? We've heard like the term Yogg-Saloth before, our, our characters, so... We, oh, have we? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of, um... No. You two haven't, because you don't have that memory. Oh, yeah. No, I have. No, didn't we get Monkey it in um, has Corbett has too? I think we got it in Corbett, too. I think Corbett was Yogg-Sothoth. Oh, was he? I, but I, I, don't think, was, I don't um... think you read the journals in Corbett. I think you burnt the house down pretty quickly. Oh, we got no, we got the journals. We, uh, um... Yeah, because that's how we got them committed. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was muted the whole time. Uh... <laughs> I've got a journal. I've got the uh, the ladies' journal from the code. Oh yeah, you also you Yorkshire, yes, that's Yorkshire right. You, you you got the journal as well, Monkey, and brought it back for them, which is where yeah. Bradley got some wizard, right. wizard nonsense. Yeah. All right. So yes, so, uh, familiar with the Yorks yes, and it the does seem to be tying to old. old Why yes? Oh my gosh! Apparently, Web Capture knows what Yogg-Sothoth is. Oh my god, really? Oh, oh my goodness. Throws in the web, captioner, web captioner knows too much. Uh, let's just try some other. Nyalyapotep. No. Nyalyapotep. No. <laughs> it's not even trying. It's giving me nothing. Cthuga. 
I think I think uh, you need to say like you Cthulhu. need to say more than one word at a time, otherwise it doesn't pick it up. Oh yeah, true. So this is me talking and mentioning Cthulhu. Nah, yeah, Sharpen a graph is sharpen a graph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give that. All right. Uh, so, as you finish reading the journal, um, clearly Memphis's faculties left him many years ago, but he did continue to perform. I mean, he's had shows since then, and it's also incorporated more and more dangerous and strange acts. What's the next step from here? Where do we go? What All we right. Do? Well,. I think we've got some information. It seems that... Uh, uh, look, this last entry here is rather on the nose, creeping through the house, and we've seen the house, you know, leap up and act in certain ways, and Josephine appears to be talking to the damn thing. Um, I don't even... think it's unreasonable to go back to Mr. Vaughan and say that, based on our investigation, we believe that Memphis and or his assistant were responsible for the deaths of the, uh, I do not remember their names. Oh, the, the, the brothers. Levy, the Levy, Levy brothers. brothers. Um, do Leary, either directly or via booby-trapped, a booby-trapped house. It's not incorrect. We're just leaving out the big thing of Memphis being the booby-trapped house. So, that, I, yes, I, 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 I agree. Now, there are a couple of loose ends there. First of all, um, first of all, we, we don't really know what, uh, what, what Orson will do, Mr. Vaughn will do. If he I plans... A, I have a somewhat, I have an idea of what he might do. What do you think he'll do? Burn burn down the house and try to kill Miss Lynch? No, he won't try. All right. Well, then we are we are sanctioning murder, which is that's something. But let's return Not to that. Specifically, moral. he may have a conversation with her first to try and find out more about the situation. We can be honest and say we're not sure exactly what happened, in as much as there Memphis was not there, but. It, Based on going into the house, it appears to be booby trapped, which, and Miss Lynch was there and seemed perfectly at home in the house. He may talk to her, and if he determines that she is at fault, then there is a chance that she may no longer walk this earth, but it's not a given. I'm just saying if he decides that it's her fault, then he, there is no try. Well, I, I suppose we bring what we know and that is up to him whether we have fulfilled the terms of our arrangement and if not then he'll have to give us very specific instructions about what else he wants to know but that doesn't resolve the issue of of of, of memphis necessarily we don't know that you now for all we know he's found a way to dissipate inside he said that he has the ability to travel to anywhere we might need some kind of ritual to dispel him or something like that and then where does hawkins fit into this whole scenario and what what about his daughter surely she knows something they're, 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 i think there's more to this but if the I both think of you you're right i do think there's more to it i just don't know if we need to know any more to satisfy mr born which is Above all things, the thing I care most about in this situation, I don't... Usually, I would be very happy to be curiously poking around things that I shouldn't be. You, you both know me well enough for that by now. But Mr. Vaughan is not a man to be trifled with. I, I understand that, and I respect that. And we can go to speak to Mr. Vaughan and tell him what we know by all means, but... Speaking to Mr. Vaughan might not resolve our investigation, so to speak, you know? I, I don't know why we do exactly what it is we do, continuously throw ourselves into these terrible, awful situations, if it's not to try and put an end to the horror and protect people, surely, right? I, I think that... No. Well, I'm just curious. Right. Well, um... Life is interesting. Why not poke about in places you're not meant to be, just to see what pokes back, you know? I think that's what a lot of the people that we've spent a lot of time trying to stop thought, Monkey. I, I hope that your curiosity won't lead too deeply down that path. Well, I did grab this. Okay. Is a, a, what is that? Or... And should we know about it? <laughs> well, I talked to it and it didn't talk back, so I'm assuming it's not too dangerous, is... but they seem kind of fragile. Isn't that one of... The eyes, the eyes, the eyes, I see through the spheres. Isn't that one how of his... Many, uh, 
Yeah, how many how many of those did you see? Was it ten of them? Seven. Seven. Oh. We said I see ten times, so well, I mean, that could have just been hyperbole. I think he said, he said, he, I, I got the impression that he sort of saw through the spheres. That he might now I be agree. watching us and listening to us. Hello. If so, okay, right, yeah. Um, why would there be seven of them in one place inside a box if he well, was there's, seeing through? There's, um, there's four of them now. <laughs> well, I don't like this. Could, I, could Bradley, you've done some reading on on this sort of topic. Do these look like any kind of artifact you're familiar with? Can I have a mythos mythos, mythos roll? Yeah, definitely. On the uh, spheres. So you've driven for a while and you pull up near like a, a park or something, um, a public space, and uh, if Monkey's willing to hand over one of the spheres, uh, you can take it in your hand and inspect it. There's no designs on the exterior. It's muted glass, but the inside swirls with opaque fog and gas. Uh, peering at it and recalling your knowledge, go ahead and make a bullet mythos roll. My you, know, monkeys, you say you weren't going to hand it over. Sorry, I thought. No, you no, I, I, I yeah. sort of originally was like, mm, yeah, all right, fine. Yeah, all right, but I'm taking it back. Yeah, of course. You're three, one apiece. Share your like, Cthulhu Mythos is well, only twelve. Monkey hand things over without getting something in return. <laughs> like a hood ornament. It's only 12, but I've rolled suspiciously well on it in the past. You say that, and now you're absolutely going to roll like a critical failure, and you're just going to go fucking batch it. Well, now I am that you've said that. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to roll it. Okay. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Look, you, you have not seen anything specific to these. Looking at them, and based on what monkeys said and can easily say, uh, they seem to be shifting. Like, there, there is some sort of change that occurs, and so far it has predated events in the house. It stays the same colour now um, and is not changing. They seem breakable, but um, they are still, like, sold like they've been carried. Like, if they were meant to be protected indefinitely, they could have used a more sturdy substance, although I guess this one's transparent. I don't know. Um, but you have not come across these yourself. Uh, you could push that roll. Uh, it would probably be, it would probably not be a sanity thing. It would probably be like going back an overnight going through your books and things um, and spending some time. Well, yeah, if we don't have any uh, anything else to do. It's sort of like getting to dinner time. Sun hasn't set yet. Are we going to try to talk to Vaughn today or uh, tomorrow? I mean, it, it's up to the two of you as well. I, I want both of you to be comfortable with what we're telling Mr. Vaughn, because I'm not prepared to lie to him. I'm, I'm prepared to tell him the truth that he is likely to understand, and if he pokes further, then he's welcome to as much truth as he wants. But I don't think we lead with, there's a haunted house that murders people. And we also need to talk about whether quite indeed we will be uh, throwing Josephine Lynch into the murder situation. I don't have a problem with that, personally. I don't think he's going to kill her. Well, you seemed quite certain that he was going to only moments ago. No, you said he will try, and I said no, he will, if he chooses to. I just was right. really clear that if he decides to, there is no try, there is just do. Well, look, I mean, we don't, I, 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 it seems that Josephine may in some way have some kind of involvement with all of this. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's something. But that said, also, is, is, in, is does that, justify her at least kidnapping, you, you, you know? Um, she killed three people who shouldn't be dead. Did, did she? Or did Memphis? Same thing. Those two worked pretty closely together. I agree. She seemed to be pretty well in cahoots with whatever entity is in that house. Right. Well, look, if the two of you uh, feel that the burden of proof is sufficient, that's up to Vaughn. I say we tell him tell him what we know and see if that gets us paid. It's not up to Vaughn though, really. It's it's up to us. 
I get the feeling that he's he's not exactly a burden of proof kind of guy. There are three brothers who I may not have known personally, but were at least moderately associated with the kind of places I used to go, and they aren't here anymore. And everyone, and I do mean everyone, must always pay what is owed. Okay. Well, to Vaughn then. All right. All right. You drive back into Boston. Uh, Boston. Boston. Uh, heading Boston. into the more urban area, sort of sprawl. Uh, takes you uh, finding a parking. <laughs> Such a pain. Uh, so it takes you a little while to find a spot where you can pull in. Um, and when you leave, you make a short walk over to um, Mr. Vaughan's uh, speakeasy uh, the sorry I've lost the name of it anyway the speakeasy uh, out the front so you sort of go down a, a side alley with rubbish and stuff stacked up uh, it's a little early for people to be going in for a night out so there's not a ton of presence but there's another comically large gentleman guarding the is door it bull? Uh, this is, one's is it? water buffalo uh, an even, an even larger man. Do uh, I, do I know, do I know him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You kind hey, of run with his... WB. <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers. Uh, yeah, he, he, he recognizes you. And he says, uh, I, I, I didn't know Mr. Vaughn was expecting uh, the three of you tonight. We, we've come, we've come to provide a progress report. So we, we didn't make uh, an appointment, but I don't want to know anything more. I will get in contact with him. I will let you know that the three of you are here. Why don't you come inside? Let me take your coats and jackets and Thanks, uh, I'll procure you some refreshment while you wait. Do All you right. like peanuts? Oh, or salted yeah. cashews? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good to see you, WB. It's been a while. It is good to see you as well. Why don't the three of you come inside? Uh, he takes your jackets and relieves you of weapons once more, uh, and then seats the three of you in a booth. There's no one else in here currently. Uh, WB goes over to the bartender, makes sure you'll get some little buddy nibbles, like a small bowl of pretzels, uh, and drinks if you want it. Although this time they skip right past the rubbish and procure you the finer stuff. Uh, I, 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 I will drink. Because I'm not in time, I feel a little bit like I'm signing a death warrant, so I, I, I okay, polish yeah. off. Oh yeah, yeah. monkey drinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, let's 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 do that. So as W goes back, he walks past the two guard stations and heads into the back office where Vaughn is posted. Uh, how are the three of you feeling? And what's the? Let's get the the interior, the secret monologue in here. What's the go? Mm. Well, I'll jump in first then. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, Isabella is uh, Isabella is 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 all about the unification of, of, of her of her friends' family against this uh, against the threat that the mythos poses, right? Um, and uh, this seems to be a, a resolution, maybe not necessarily one that is is comfortable, but you know it appears to be the one that people have decided and she feels that it is her responsibility to support the group and go with them so she is she is uh putting on a brave face uh she although she will have several helpings of gin despite you know her her, her mother's voice appearing in her head telling her it's a washing woman's drink but um you know uh it, it's has to be done all right knock back a few steal your reserves and do what apparently needs to be done uh, Monkey or Bradley, anything more going on below the surface than what is presented? There, I learned June is a washerwoman's drink. <laughs> um, uh, Bradley's mind is taken by by uh, Memphis's journal and is looking forward to digging into that and seeing what more unearthly secrets he can uncover. He's vaguely curious about what Vaughn will say and, and about our investigation as it relates to him. Um, but I think he's quietly planning, you know, what, how does he follow up on this? 
what secrets does the journal hide and is he going to want to go back into that house on his own time even oh. if our contract with Vaughn is 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 over hell yes. yeah yes, so there's more he can learn here so you're sort of thumbing through the journal uh with yeah, a drink a little bit. sitting uh next to you whether you take it or not um, i think he's a brandy man brandy man nice uh lastly monkey um monkey's angry oh um monkey liked working with memphis and def didn't like josephine but i uh, sort of understood that magicians had their quirks and had their tricks and memphis was a phenomenal magician and for someone to have kind of thrown all that away on some kind of mysticism that has hurt people is not what monkey's about i think monkey's sitting there monkey will not crack a drink because monkey drinks uh, fun fact absolutely and with the constitution of 70 holds it fucking down yeah. uh, it's it. probably a better drinker than anyone else um but it's gonna have a hand in one of the like uh, pockets and it's just like thumbing over the sphere just like the the cold glass just as like a calming sort of emotion um because monkey doesn't monkey's been around doing this for a while has less qualms about what we're gonna be doing than the other two i think because it's dog eat dog world when you are doing what you do but is also um you you do look after your own even if like you get on each other's nerves or you get in each other's way professionally you don't let other people die so monkey's not impressed i dig i dig um all right uh after waiting for 15 20 minutes WB returns earlier and heads back to his post and just makes like a, it'll be a minute gesture. Uh, and then the door cracks open just enough for Mr. Vaughn to look out and wave the three of you in. And then uh, you are patted down as you go in. So if you're trying to sneak in, actually the most interesting thing is probably the orbs. Just I presume that. no one's going to try and sneak in a gun, but those may be found. What are you doing with those, monkey? Um, they are sequestered in various pockets I have in my person that are uh, not that easy to find. No, I go. All right. Uh, as you go through, then, could you please make a sleight of hand check? Sweet. Ooh. Mm, that's a 15. Uh, four points. Currently, they're going to find it. You haven't actively... You, you've kind of secreted them away a bit, but they'll just take them, or, or at least say, what is this? Mm. You could push the roll, but that would be actively attempting to obscure them. Or you may have four points of luck, so they remain hidden. You're doing pretty well with your luck so far. Mm. Just a couple of points here and there. No big yeah, I think, I think it's not... To be clear... I do not wish to hide them because I refuse to let them out. Like, they're, they're never being seen by anyone. I just don't want them to be out yet. Yep. Like, I want that to... So, yes, you may have four points of luck. I will take it. Uh, they give you a cursory pat down, but they're searching for weapons. Uh, and where the orbs are, they're hidden. They wouldn't really flag it as anything particularly interesting. Um... With that success as well, if you want to have a knife as well, like just they take the bandolier, but you can have a couple of things just scattered away. Yeah, um, I think I think Monkey always has like at least one or two like in a boot or like you know tucked in a pocket behind the belt. Like it is just nothing against Mr. Vaughn. It's purely defensive. It pays all the to time. be prepared. Yeah, I think it's almost like it's absent-mindedly there. Like Monkey doesn't even remember that they're there. They just are good to have it'd be like taking jewelry off you wear all the time you're like i feel yeah. weird. um 
So, search, the three of you step into the back room. Again, it's a sort of a nicer furnished one. There's a plant in one of the corners, and Mr. Vaughn himself sits in the armchair facing a small coffee table with a couch on one side and a couple of smaller chairs off to the edge. He's once again uh, an African-American gentleman with uh, short cropped hair dressed in a very flash suit. Uh, he's unbuttoned his jacket to show the low slung holster and pistol held there um, that dangles against his right, uh, oh, sorry, his left uh, ribs. And on the uh, table is like a couple of just like folders of just work or something and a pen in an inkwell nearby that he's been working on. And as you come in, he just leans out a, a boot and clicks it closed just so that you can't see inside. He waits for all three of you to sit. Uh, the waiter comes and goes, dropping drinks on the table and the whole thing's in silence until he breaks it by saying, well, who did it? So... We investigated the house, and it appears that the person you are after is Memphis himself. There was um, considerable booby trapping of various rooms and, and uh, items within the house. Um, whether he was directly, it does not look like it, especially if he was away. But uh, we did see Miss Josephine Lynch, his assistant, come and go as well and she did not seem to be bothered at all by anything in the house. So it seems that she also knew about what was in there. These... That is what we've found thus far. It, this is, um, of course, as we said to WB at the door, a progress report um, to give you as much information as we currently have. He it's levels his eyes at you for a moment, just taking the measure of your story, and he lets it kind of cognate. Says... So these booby traps hung a kid, dismembered a kid, and skewered a kid. Yeah, he had some pretty nasty stuff in his house. Uh, as to exactly how that happened, we don't know, but that is uh, a, a, a question for Ms. Lynch, we believe. Well, currently, it's a, it's a question for you. You search the house. Do you mm -hmm. find any such booby traps? Well, not one that would hang, but definitely one that would pepper someone full of holes and fill them with poison. And throw them off the roof. Mm. Thing is, yeah. I spoke with the gardener. He comes and goes from the house, and he didn't mention any booby traps, and I like to think I'm a persuasive guy. Hmm. That is, it is exactly what we found, sir. If you're not satisfied, we can, of course, go back and look further, but we came to tell you what we had found thus far, and it seems to be that the culprit, at least in some way, shape, or form, is potentially Memphis himself. I can't but work with if potentially. Not the house. Well, it's his Do house. you feel that the three of you have satisfied the terms of our contract? Is this actionable evidence? Because I can take this. Monkey, I can take you at your word, and I can run with this. And I'll make sure those that are owed get what's coming. Are we done? It sort of rolls for a moment. I I'll put it like in, possibly in like where the, the inkwell or something. It's like an ashtray or, just... or something. Yeah. Yeah. He looks at it <laughs> and goes, What is this? Something behind one of those booby traps. He reaches out to touch it and he pauses just like a finger's width away and looks at you just to see that, like, you nod to indicate it's safe to pick up. Yeah. He palms it dexterously and looks it over what is this if I don't know listen um, one of the clarifying factors here that we should point out uh, is that Memphis is 
totally insane. Um, we uh, we uncovered writings of his. Uh, we spoke to people close to him, uh, and we saw the contents and the uh, context of his home. Uh, he is deranged to a point that he would create these kind of traps, that he would do these kind of things. Uh, Uncle Brad, oh, I, you're the one with the journal, yes? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Would, would you be so kind as to produce his journal? Very well. Before? I produce it. Doctor, uh, uh, the relevant entries. The, the good doctor here is a trained psychiatrist, an alienist. Um, in your professional opinion, Doctor, is Memphis the Great insane and capable oh, yes. of violence? Quite mad, quite capable. Yes, indeed. Um, he he uh, he has uh, similar cases, uh, a similar similar condition uh, to cases I've experienced in the past, where they um, they uh, seek to seek to seek to gain some alien knowledge, and uh, they can easily turn their entire life's pursuit to, to center around this um, this quest. Uh, and yes, they they tend to see enemies where there aren't any, and uh, can be quite secretive and protective of the things they've found. Yes, it all it all matches up. It all matches up. Yeah, it's quite, yeah. He takes a journal and flicks it open. Doesn't seem to be reading it closely, just kind of idly thumbing it. You get the impression that of all the evidence presented, it's your word that's weighing up the most. Mm. Um, can I get a persuasion test from one of you with a bonus dice? I would favour monkey or brad actually you've all made arguments a any of you can make it but apply a bonus for the assistance of the others I, w I would lean towards uh uncle brad making Bradley it to deliver the i think he's got blood. the highest persuasion i'm pretty persuasive yeah. i'm slightly above average persuasive yes. 58 two points of luck so okay closer than we might have liked um brings me down to four. Oh oh my flat. god almost a fail Jeez. All right, he takes the journal and he takes the orb and he places them clearly on his side of the table, indicating he intends to keep them. Um, oh, just one? He only gave him one. He only has one, yeah, he hasn't seen We that got else. three, that's all right. Um, he goes, I can work with this. If Mr. Memphis the Great killed those boys and if his assistant helped him to do it, We'll find her, and we'll get what any other evidence we need. Memphis isn't here, though. Any sign of where he's gone? I'd say if you send a message via his property, he may come back, or he may stay very, very far away forever. These uh, magician types, you know, they hold on to their trinkets very, very keenly. I think uh, putting his life's work into a pyre, honestly, might harm him more than killing him. Our contract is fulfilled. Monkey, the favor is resolved. Bradley, Isabella, did we? I actually don't think there was any deal. No, there was right? no. It was, like, it was good, purely, like... purely for the for the love of the craft. It goes Bradley, Isabella. I thank you for your assistance. On other matters, the three of you have been in the house. You've navigated it safely for a time, at least. When I send some people. If the three of you would accompany them, make sure they get in and out safely, avoid any booby traps, and see that this job is done, I'll pay for the time or I can get you something that you need. Are you interested? What, what do you plan to, to do in the house? If it's a simple task, we can possibly perform it for you. I think having professionals take care of the, um, 
making it look like a, a, an accident. He kind of holds up a hand. It, it, it weighs, he goes, distance is always preferred between myself and my tasks. He knows what he's done. He'll get the message. If you can level the, uh, the building, burn it to the ground, if you're willing, or you can serve as guides. Uh, um, the kind Again, of, um... neither of these are demands. This is a uh, related but disconnected task. What, would you do us the enormous favor of allowing us to sleep on it and bring you an answer tomorrow morning? Of course. Take the time. Excellent. Consider what you might want for such a task and come back here tomorrow. We can discuss further. In the meantime, thank you for your work. It's been invaluable. I will speak with Miss Lynch myself as soon as I am able. I am curious, Mr. Hawkins, uninvolved? He appeared to, they appeared, Mr. Hawkins and Memphis, appeared to have a falling out around the same time that, and I'll like note the, the later entries around the time that occurred. I suspect that Mr. Hawkins is worth your time keeping an eye on, but I, I do not believe he had anything to do with this particular incident. I do not consider him stable, Mr. Bourne. He says nothing more. He nods, takes the journal and the globe, and the meeting is clearly finished. Um, the three of you retire, uh, heading back upstairs and to the car, um, and unless I'm mistaken, home. That you will ruminate until the morrow. So, yes. What is your plan? Uh, well, you're out from under his thumb, monkey. The contract is filled. Now we have to decide whether we leave things exactly as they are and try and distance ourselves from this whole affair as much as possible, or whether we stick around and see if we can't steer things in the right direction. What would you we like to do, Cousin Isabella? Well, um, I, I think I, I, I don't want to tear everybody away from what is a sensible course of action. If the collection of you feel that the matter is resolved, then by God's let it be resolved. It would be nice, you know, to one time just step away from things before one of us ends up almost getting killed. But I'm not sure if Vaughn is equipped to deal with Memphis. I'm not sure that Hawkins is as innocent as he may be made out to be. And I would quite like to put this matter to bed as best as we can personally. If I had a choice, I'd say we make it back into the house again, try and figure out exactly what's going on, put a stop to it. And uh, once that's done, uh, perhaps in return for leveling the place, we can ask, uh, we can get Vaughn's assistance in, you know, dealing with Hawkins or something like that. At the very least, giving us some kind of, you know, legal protection. I feel like perhaps Mr. Vaughn could um, clear up a lot of our legal issues that we are currently hounded by. Mm. Uh, I, I do think there's a possibility, and I think that we might be able to kill multiple birds with one stone. I think that my, my course of action would be, let's sleep on it to make sure that we don't decide we'd better off leave things be. Let's go and speak to Memphis' daughter. Uh, I think that she must know something, and we can be more direct about everything. And then after that, talk to Vaughn, back to the house, resolve everything there, and leave. Uncle Brad? Well, I agree. Uh, I don't think this is quite over for us yet. Um, and if, uh, if, if, if Vaughn's people were to enter the house, then uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate, well, maybe they won't appreciate, but uh, 
in retrospect, I'm sure they'll appreciate having us there, or at least we'd appreciate being there, because we've got experience tangling with, um, with, with things beyond regular understanding, and I think it'd be better for everyone if, if we're there than we're not. Well, I must admit, I have a mighty curiosity to see what happens when I throw one of those orbs. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I do believe so. I, um, sounds like we're decided then. Let's go poke rest. around in this house and see what pokes back. All right. All right. Wonderful. Uh, so the three of you return home and retire for the evening. The next day you can quickly reconvene with, uh, Vaughn. And are you agreeing to fulfill the whole task yourself or just to escort some of his men who will do the actual torching. Uh, I think we'll fulfill the whole task ourselves. Okay. With um, with the request of having the requisite materials provided. He does like during the conversation. He makes a motion to one of the the gentlemen. <laughs> uh, the deal is made, and we can negotiate the terms a bit off stream, and then we'll clarify them next session for the viewers. Mm -hmm. But like, because you guys can all basically get a favor out of this. Uh, it can be cash, it can be a, a problem solved, or it could be a future, like a gimme. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll deal with that after. Uh, when you head back out to the car, it's like got gasoline canisters in the back um, and uh, bundles of, of wood and like just loads of stuff. Uh, there's even, it, there's some there's some firearms as well, if you feel the need, but um, you have the equipment necessary to do this you will have a portion of the day if you wish to speak with ingrid or make any other preparations but come night time three of you will make your way back to the house of memphis you will look around and you will see if you cannot bring it to the ground but there are more secrets still hidden within the walls and you are not the only people intent on finding them so as we pick this session up next week we'll have the finale of house of memphis zippity hey. zoo all right cheers for playing guys that's my that's my wizard magician that's your catchphrase now catchphrase yeah when i do tricks yeah, and stuff going in. zippity one. zoo all right well cheers for playing guys thank you everyone for watching this will be up on the youtube imminently and we'll be back next week for the finale of house of memphis stuff's getting weirder yet so thank you for watching that's what it does that's what it does and we'll see you soon cheers